Welcome to the Widowed Parent Podcast with your host, Jenny Lisk. Hey everyone, it's Jenny Lisk, and this is episode 67 of the Widowed Parent Podcast. And this is another pandemic special episode, and I want to thank Buffy Peters of Hamilton's Academy of Grief and Loss, which is at Hamilton's Funeral Home in Des Moines, Iowa, for speaking with me for this episode. We had originally planned to talk about children and funerals during the pandemic, and we did talk about that, uh, but it also ended up being a broader discussion that I think will be useful to anyone who is thinking about what you can do when you can't have a funeral during this pandemic. Um, I think that most of us assume that, you know, when people close to us die, we have certain expectations maybe of the way we will remember them, the way we will celebrate their life, the way we will come together to mourn and to comfort each other. And one of the problems right now is that in many cases we just can't do that at all, or what we can do is very, very restricted. Um, I think one of the most interesting things for me was when Buffy outlined the functions that a funeral typically performs um, in terms of the grief and loss process, and it got me thinking that it would probably be important and probably be helpful to, you know, if we can't have that funeral, to think about each of those functions that it might perform and try to think up any sort of creative or alternative ways to cover some of those same functions. Um, Not saying that it would be, you know, as good or not saying that it would be enough as compared to, you know, maybe celebrating their life the way we would want to. Um, However, it seems like it's it's something and likely to be helpful um, if we can think about those elements and uh, certainly better than um, than doing nothing. So, uh, also we, we talked about the importance of involving kids in the family grieving process and, uh, and some ideas for including them. So all in all, a terrific discussion. Big thanks to Buffy. And, uh, I hope you enjoy my discussion with Buffy Peters. My guest today is Buffy Peters, who's the director of Hamilton's Academy of Grief and Loss, which is at Hamilton's Funeral Home in Des Moines, Iowa. And if this sounds a little bit familiar, it's because uh, Buffy was on the show way back in, gosh, probably a year ago. I forgot to look up the episode number, but I'll I'll link that in the show notes, (laughs) along with Sasha Mudloff, who is there with her as well. And we had such a great discussion Um, and actually it's one of the episodes that I put in the welcome emails for people when they get on my um, list, because I think it was such a, a wide range and discussion that covered a lot of really good bases and really good kind of mm, key points or key, you know, things to keep in mind for widowed parents. So thank you for that prior discussion. Well, thank you for including that. It was a wonderful talking to you just about all of those considerations when we're talking to grieving kids and we're happy to share all of that information and hopefully make it a little bit easier for the widowed parents out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, And I should say that, so today is April 16th, 2020, and we're doing a a shorter pandemic special episode. So thank you for, uh, for coming on here on short, short timeframe to to do this. Um, I think it's important that we spend a little time, um, you know, considering different pieces of challenges that are coming up now during the pandemic. And I know um, since you are at a funeral home that this topic of, funerals more broadly and kids and funerals as well um, is something that you guys have been um, talking about and thinking about and creating content for. So um, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thank you for having us. We're excited to be with you again, Jenny. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so first of all, um, my understanding is that funerals and the restrictions and the kind of status of what can and can't happen is very different now by state. And I know you're in Iowa, but we do have a national audience, well, worldwide, actually. Um, but anyway, it could be very different in different places. So can, can you just give us maybe a little bit of the landscape of some of the different things you're seeing as far as what can and can't be done right now during the pandemic? Yeah, so it, it does vary state to state. And of course, I've been 
reading all kinds of articles of what's happening in Italy and China and all over, you know, the globe. Um, we're all under this, you know, global pandemic. And so we have to react in appropriate ways. So nationally here in the United States, um, you know, each state actually has different rules and regulations as to how funeral homes and funeral directors have to operate. Um, so nationally, the National um, Funeral Directors Association, they kind of set forth like, this is what you should be doing. Um, and they are going along with the CDC's guidelines of 10 people um, is the limit that you can have at funerals here in the United States. Now, some states have very strict um, guidelines at this time, um, such as New York and New Jersey, where they are not currently allowing any funerals. Um, mm. Other states, uh, what was it? Um, Connecticut, you can only have five people at your funeral. Other states, it's the 10 people include funeral um, professionals and clergy and the family. Um, so here in Iowa, we are one of very few states um, that do not have a stay at home order. Um, we're pretty close to it. They're encouraging us if we can work at home to work at home. Essential businesses are closed. Um, you know, we can't go the bars, restaurants, all of that have closed down. Um, you can get takeout and delivery, but that's that's about it. And so really, they're just encouraging stay home. Yes, you can go out and exercise, but you need to keep that safe physical distance from other people. Um, and so it, it does very, very much. Um, and so I, I know that we feel very fortunate that we still can have funerals here in Iowa. Um, we are limited to those 10 people. Um, and so most of our families are choosing to do maybe a private um, family viewing, and then they might um, broadcast live on Facebook or Zoom um, and do the funeral service that way. Um, some families are still choosing to do a public visitation, um, and currently in Iowa, they can do that, but in our facility, only 10 people can be in there at a time. Um, so once two people leave, two more people can come in. Um, and so again, in within our facilities, making sure that they're, you know, six feet distance um, in the parking lot where people are waiting we'll often have you know one of our funeral escorts sitting in their little car with the lights um, just kind of reminding people like you need to stay in your cars and let's not you know congregate that kind of thing um, but reading you know what's going on in Italy and what's going on in some of these other countries and in New York um, you know we're really fortunate that there is still things that we can do at that point to memorialize that person after they've died. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it sounds like though, wherever you are, I mean, whether you're in Iowa and you can have 10 people or somewhere else and you can have five or somewhere else and you really can do nothing. Mm -hmm. um, it's still very different from what probably, you know, if you were thinking a year ago that if a loved one were to die, you might be expecting a funeral with 50 people or mm -hmm. 500 people or whatever, as the case may be. Um, and everything is very different and very much, uh, restricted now so um which i i assume um that loss of i mean losing someone is hard enough and then you have an idea well we will gather and celebrate and console each other and then you lose that too mm -hmm. yep it's just one more thing that we've taken for granted in this whole mm. thing um, yeah. that yes we can always have funerals right no nope. i mean most people are not excited to go to a funeral um but we take that for granted that we will be able to do that mm. um just speaking from personal experience um, my significant other his dad died a week ago today from COVID 19. um he was 82 not in the best of health of course and living in a long-term care facility and they were talking about you know when dad dies, mom will move down to Florida where his sister lives. And, but that was like far out when it mm. happened and it was going to be with full military honors. And, you know, they had all of this stuff planned and then he gets sick with COVID-19 and dies. And now we're limited. His sister that lives in Florida can't come up. She has severe asthma. She needs to stay at home. Um, they can't do those military honors and no one's getting, you know, having those happen right now. Um, and so what they're grieving on top of <laughs> the death of someone special is that idea of 
this is what we would do and and be able to do for our person. And mm -hmm. I think when we think about, you know, why are funerals so important? Um, in a time like this, we can really see why. When it's mm. threatened and we think we can't have that, uh, you know, there's so many purposes of what that funeral does. Well, and let's talk about that, yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'm interested kind of from a big picture perspective because if we're thinking about, well, we can't have a funeral, so what can we do? It seems like it would be helpful to understand some of the functions that a funeral performs in the grieving and loss process. So can you take us through that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the interesting thing is when we look at those different aspects of it, so few of those are things that we cannot currently do. And so mm. we just have to be creative in the other ways that we can do that, you know. Um, and so what we think about when we think of the purposes of the funeral is one, it's going to really mark the transition to life after the death of someone that you love. Um, so it's really that ceremony and that ritual that kind of kicks off this this new life this new normal right mm. um it also serves the purpose of offering support um comfort and also meaning for those that are grieving that death um you know it's also going to provide that safe venue for the physical and emotional expression of grief and so the example i like to give you know you expect in that front pew where the uh, woman her husband just died she's a mess she's sobbing no one's going to think twice about that at the funeral right that's mm. that safe venue for the that expression now when you see her at the grocery store in the soup aisle sobbing hysterically because she just saw her husband's favorite soup people might not be as kind, right? They might be like, oh, I hope she's okay. Some people might check in, but it's just in that context, it looks different, especially mm -hmm. in our society. Um, so it really is that safe venue for those, those expressions. And think back to when your special person died. Those early expressions of grief were heartbreaking and heart-wrenching and so it really is contained in that that ceremony um, it also gives the opportunity for friends and family um, the whole community honestly to come out and support one another and the grieving family and that's the piece that really is at I guess risk right now right um, because they can't come out like they normally would have um, but also it's still you know the funeral service itself it allows um, for reflection of that person's life so when we think about all those kind of aspects of it it's really that community and coming together that's really at risk in this global pandemic we can still honor that person's life um, we can still have those rituals that can still be meaningful we just have to be creative and have how we do that and know eventually this will end we don't know when but eventually it will and so there's nothing wrong with picking another special day in the future that that's when we're going to get together and all be together and share our stories and show that community um, and those special days are going to going to be larger than life um, and so kind of keeping that in mind that it doesn't have to be an all or nothing can't do anything now we're just not going to do anything ever because mm. we know that we kind of need those things um, to get the support that we need and to honor that life that that deserves to be honored mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense so as i've taken some notes here i'm thinking if i were contemplating now um figuring out how to honor and memorialize and mark the passing of someone close to me in this time i guess I, it sounds like i should be thinking about okay how am i going to mark that transition how am i going to provide support comfort meaning for that grieving the good those grieving people how am i um yeah how can you provide some ideas for safe expressions of grief how can you provide some kind of ways for others to support that yeah. makes a lot of sense okay brainstorming yeah. around those kind of yeah. objectives objectives might yeah. be the wrong word but those yeah. kind of you know elements uh, of it elements yeah. that a funeral typically provides the opportunity for yeah. uh, figuring out some other way to cover okay yeah. um what do you think about children and how they come into play with this um i guess is it 
what, how important do you think it is to try to include children in some way in this family grieving process? Yeah, very important. Um, just as it typically would be in non-pandemic days, um, it's critically important for kids to feel involved and feel like they have a say. Um, when they've had someone special that dies, if we keep them out of it, they're going to feel like they are not a part of the family grieving process. And that can actually hinder their grief process. Um, so ah. keeping in mind that if we can actually, you know, get them included, get their input kids have wonderful ideas and um, often we'll have you know families ask well should a child be involved with the funeral process should they come to the viewing should they do all these things of course in pandemic days we have more things to consider certainly um, but that still doesn't mean that they can't be involved um, and you know so much is online so even in the funeral pr planning process maybe we're looking at what kinds of caskets and urns are online well what color do you think we should use um, you know, maybe they want to be involved in the service, even if they can't be there. Maybe they're writing a letter that's read at the service, and then it's put in the casket or cremated with their loved one. Um, maybe they're, you know, helping pick out pictures um, for, you know, the memorial program that people take home or, or they get to make their own little picture, um, you know, the, the slideshow or the memory board or anything like that. Um, just really involving them helps them get some ownership, some security, and we're teaching them how to honor life, which that's the biggest thing that we want to do. We know newsflash, we're all going to die. <laughs> um, we're all going to have special people that die. This won't be the last one. Um, so how can we teach them how to honor life and that love and bond that we shared with our special people? Um, mm. So there's so many different ideas that you can do. And kids, honestly, they're so much more technologically advanced than we are. Um, one thing that I thought was the sweetest thing was my significant other, his niece, she actually created this little um, video of her grandpa with pictures. And there was this country song, which I didn't know because I don't really do country. But um, And the, the lyric at the end of it was, I wish grandpas didn't have to die. And that mm. was actually something that she showed her mom in the morning. Of course, she was a mess. She was just bawling after she saw it. But then she was able to share that on her social media. Um, and so without having that funeral service happening right now, she's still able to reach out, look at this beautiful thing my daughter did, and be able to get that kind of comfort from other people saying, you know, I'm so sorry to hear about your dad and all of those things that she's just yearning for that usually would be contained within that funeral service. And mm. not to say that that won't be contained when we are able to have that service, but she's getting some of those things to kind of get her through now. Um, the other idea I think is really a uh, cool idea is to have have the kids if you can't attend a service or you're not allowed to have a service is have them do one at home so they get to pick out the music they get to decide what you know things they're gonna say and maybe if you're like our family you're spread all across America, um, you can have everyone, you know, uh, Zoom call in and they can be a part and watch what the kids have actually come up with. Um, ah. So you just have to be creative in how we do those things. And when kids have ownership and they're able to do those things, it empowers them and gives them that sense of control that honestly all of us are lacking. Um, and so just really including them, I think, is really important. Mm -hmm. It strikes me as you're talking that teenagers and even kids younger than teenagers um, very well might have some really creative ideas that use technology in various formats and um, that maybe their parents haven't thought of because they're not as digitally native or whatever and they might act that might actually be really empowering for them to make some really creative and proactive suggestions that yeah. that they can think of yeah absolutely um, you said something else though that I uh, Okay, so it's, it's really a thing. Like, I've been through a funeral, obviously, and planning and the whole deal. Uh, I didn't know that kids could write a letter or draw a picture and put it in with the, into yeah. the cremation process or into the casket for burial. Is that really a thing? Yes. Yeah, so we, uh, the last first few we did, which was actually the beginning of March, um, we had recommended that. Um, Grandpa had died and we may, we actually have created a little first viewing is what we call it, um, where we're helping the kids see their person for the last time at the funeral home. Um, and we made a little coloring book and we included a page that they can write a letter or they can um, draw a picture. And 
the mom's face lit up, the kid's face lit up. They're like, oh, we can do that. That's awesome. We're like, absolutely. And so that's something, again, if they're not there, can be, you know, take a picture, print it out, whatever. Your funeral home would be more than willing to work with you, whatever you can do. Hmm. And if you, none of you are able to come to the funeral because you're in New York, it is on lockdown. I guarantee you, you reach out they would so be willing to work with you and be able to do something. Um, I also saw like in Italy, they were able to drive the coach with the casket in it by the family home. They weren't able mm -hmm. to participate in the burial, but they were able to kind of wave to the casket as it went by. Um, and being able to send that thing with our person, there's something very powerful about that. So whether you get to see it or not, knowing that it's there, yeah. helps you, feel, you know, included in that. Well, that's okay. So I, 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 that sounds like a good um, thing to keep in mind for anybody who has, I mean, in, in this case, you know, widow parents who may be listening, you know, if a child has a parent die, uh, whether it's now or in the future, the idea of putting a letter or a drawing in with the cremation or burial. I didn't know that. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Uh, and you mentioned driving by in Italy. And I think you also had an interesting idea about how maybe friends could support a family uh, with drive-bys. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So you, I know everyone's seen on Facebook, there's all kinds of like the kid having their fifth birthday party and people are driving by. It's that whole parade thing. Mm. Um, and it's really important because you can see all of the people who are thinking about you and all the people that are caring about you. Um, so one thing that we've done with our funeral services, the funeral itself has to be just those 10 people with the family. Um, so one thing that our families have chosen to do is have everyone else that normally would attend, they're outside in their cars, watching on their phone, the funeral service, hmm. and then they all process to the, um, to the, the cemetery um, and maybe they drive by a favorite place. So maybe where they work to the family home, a restaurant, things like that. And then only the family get out for the actual graveside service. But that whole cemetery is lined with all these people there for them showing mm. Um, mm. And other than after the family leaves, some people will get out and leave mementos. You know, it just kind of depends on what the family wants as well. Um, but one really cool story is actually uh, one of our funeral directors, her dad um, was dying of pancreatic cancer last week. Um, and he was a former uh, police sergeant. And the police department came out and they lined their street. Um, I don't know. It looks like there was probably like 15 police cars. They all got out of their cars making sure they're six feet away from each other and they did this call out and it is beautiful and he saw it and he was inside dying and it made him smile and it just showed the family that even though he had retired you know some 20 years before that they were there they were supporting them um, and so I think that that being able to see the people who are there who have your back that want to support you um there's just no words, you know, for uh -huh. that, especially when a family's like, I can't do anything. We can't have funerals. We can't have all of our people here. Um, to be able to see that I think is really special. Yeah. Um, not something that keeps us all safe. You don't have to get out of your car. Um, one family, um, they asked everyone to bring a balloon and they all release the balloon at a certain time. Um, so, you know, there's different things that you can do depending on, on what's, what feels right for the family. Um, another thing that one uh, veteran, what they did for him, they couldn't do, um, you know, all the, the military honors. They just lined the entire um, funeral home outside of it and the graveside, um, that whole cemetery was with, with flags. Um, yeah. So there's things that you can do that still can be special. You, again, just have to be creative with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Um, as we wrap up here, uh, let me ask, I know you guys have a really terrific online research library and I'm frequently sharing that out with people um, because I think that the number, and these are free downloads or PDFs on zillions of different topics and aspects related to grief. Are there a few of those that you think are particularly relevant right now or something we can maybe point people to if they're looking for more? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we did just develop um, a handout about children and funerals during a pandemic. Mm. Um, so that is on our website. So you can see some of these ideas we've been talking about. Um, also, just those reminders of why it's so important to include them. Um, we actually do have a specific page on our website that does have all COVID-19 related resources, whether they're from us or from all the different wonderful grief organizations that we're, you know, um, kind of linked up to. Um, so there's some wonderful workbooks for kids, for teens, um, lots of different information on there. Um, so yes, please go to our website, especially if you're worried about how do I explain cremation to a child or, you know, even though we're very hyper-focused on people dying of COVID-19, people are still dying of other causes. Um, mm. So we have information of, you know, when your person dies from a drug overdose or suicide, homicide, um, if you're working with a teen that needs some, you know, ideas of what they can do. So there's lots of, lots and lots of resources on there. So don't hesitate to go on to hamiltonsfuneralhome.com all of its PDF printed out. It's all free. We want to make sure it gets into the hands of the people who need it most. Mm. Well, that was going to be my next question. So thank you for sharing the website address there. And I will also add, I think there's a number of handouts, you know, by age group. If you're talking to a small child about death, if you're talking to a medium age child, for lack of a better word, a teenager, yeah. a young adult, um, just so much terrific stuff there. Okay, great. Um, well, let's just wrap it up then. I'll say my guest today is Buffy Peters, Director of Hamilton's Academy of Grief and Loss at Hamilton's Funeral Home in Des Moines, Iowa. So Buffy, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Jenny. It was nice talking to you. Yes, you too. I hope you enjoyed my discussion with Buffy Peters as much as I did. You can find show notes and all the links at widowedparentpodcast.com. Look for episode 67. And I hope you'll have a chance to catch some of the other pandemic special episodes as well. There have been some terrific discussions uh, with the Dougie Center, with Hummingbird Center for Hope, also with Julie Lithcott Hames, and also with the authors of the new free ebook, I Have a Question About Coronavirus. So you can find all of these at jennylisk.com slash pandemic. And please do share with your friends. Uh, the topics for these special episodes are either about grief or about parenting during this pandemic. They're not all specific to widowed parents. Um, certainly the parenting, spe uh, parenting related ones are applicable to any parents right now. Uh, and, you know, grief is getting to be... Um, a bigger and bigger topic these days. There's uh, so much additional grief and loss and struggle right now. Um, so I think that these episodes um, will potentially be of interest to a much broader audience than uh, just widowed parents. So do be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, or on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss any episodes um, coming up. And of course, the very best way to make sure that you'll never miss an episode is to make sure that you're on my email list. And you can just go to JennyLisk.com, J-E-N-N-Y-L-I-S-K.com for that. So um, be sure to look out for my discussion with Elka Thompson in Scotland on next week's regular show. Uh, we, we had the loveliest discussion, and I know you'll want to hear uh, her story and what she has to say. So thank you for listening, and until next week, keep smiling. Thank you for listening to the Widowed Parent Podcast with your host, Jenny Lisk. Connect with us on social media and at widowedparentpodcast.com.